We are the fifth largest country in the world in terms of population. Can, can anyone here name the first four for me? Just shout it out. Who, who do you think said number one in terms of population? China, second, India, third, USA, fourth, Indonesia, and we're sitting at number five. So does population really contribute towards economic growth and development? Hands up for yes? It should. So how much do you think these top five countries in terms of population contribute to world GDP? Just as a percentage. Any guesses? 75. What else? So 40 is close. So 45% of world GDP is contributed by the top five countries in terms of population. When we pick up the top 10 in terms of population, that's almost 60% of world GDP. So clearly there's something here. But what do you think Pakistan's contribution is to world GDP? I can't hear you. 3%? It's actually less than 0.4%. So let's think about that for a minute, right? The top 10 countries in the world in terms of population are contributing almost 60% of world GDP. We are at 0.4. What's happened? And I think this is where let's drill down into a little bit of micro here. Our labor force is about 70 million people. We talk about young labor force. We talk, you know, we have what 150 million people below the age of 30. But truly, how productive are they? Have we really invested in our labor force in terms of education, in terms of health, in terms of uh, uh, you know job availability, to be able to even push our labor force to be as productive as they need to be? And the second question we should ask ourselves is what's the composition of our labor force? And I don't say this simply because I'm the only woman on this panel, is we have less than 20% of women in, represented in the entire labor force. So how on earth are 40, 50 million productive people meant to raise the welfare of 220 million people? It's not possible. So not only does our labor need to be more productive, there needs to be more of it. That means that we need to add more women. We need to add more uh, individuals who can be uh, at a certain caliber and at a certain uh, stage of their lives where they can engage in productive um, businesses. So here's our, here's our challenge and here's where I encourage you to imagine what would happen if we were able to move that 0.4 to just 0.8, just double our capacity. And that doubling our capacity will come from a wider labor force participation, greater productivity, investments in our labor force in terms of health, education, social welfare, etc. And what does that, just that 0.4 to 0.8, what does that mean for Pakistan? It will double our GDP from $350 billion to $700 billion. It will increase our middle class, which is currently about 20, 25 million people to almost 50 million people. And it will overall raise our understanding, our integration, our ability to relate to the world in a new way. So, you know, let's, let's take this as our unimaginable goal and say, how are we going to just use this strength that we have given and it's a God-given strength being number five in terms of the population metric and say how how can we uh, double our own ability by investing in our own people and I think that's the thought I'd like to leave you here with uh, you know today because ultimately any policy that we take on has to address this issue and if it doesn't then that point 0.4 goes to point 0.3, goes to point 0.2, and effectively, despite being the fifth largest country in the world, we become slowly more irrelevant.